Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to build the Airfix British Aerospace Hawk in 172nd scale painted in special NHS Charities colours. Remember if you enjoy the video and find it useful then please do click the like icon below and while you're there subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more builds, news and views and other projects as they're completed. The British Aerospace Hawk has been the RAF's principal jet trainer since entering service in 1976. It's probably most familiar as the mount of the RAF's world famous Red Arrows display team, where its small size, powerful engine and crisp control response allows precision flying that is second to none and a guaranteed crowd pleaser. Hawks have also been seen in a wide variety of colour schemes over the years, often at air displays where they're celebrating particular anniversaries. This kit provides two schemes celebrating the work of Britain's National Health Service during the COVID-19 pandemic. Airfix say that £2 from the sale of each kit will go to NHS charities together. The kit itself is rated at skill level 1 so it's achievable by pretty much anyone and it comes with one flying hour token. Now you can collect these as an FX club member towards a free kit in the future, but perhaps in the spirit of charity you might instead wish to donate it to Models for Heroes. Contact details for this excellent charity are in the information panel below. So let's see what we get in the box. The box art shows the two schemes included in this kit. One was designed by Airfix themselves, the other was the result of a competition for Airfix customers and their children, which was won by Jeff Elliott. Inside the box we have the instruction booklet, then the extensive and colourful decal sheet, followed by the decal placement sheet for both schemes. Then the parts themselves. There are four sprues of grey plastic here. Essentially, these come from the 2012 Red Arrows Hawk gift set. You can see there's a centerline fuel pod, which you don't need for this kit. With the one-piece canopy, there are just 24 parts needed for this build. The decal sheet is impressive and has benefited from FX using Cartograph to print them. There are just six common decals. All of these are instruments for the cockpit. The top half contains the decals for Jeff Elliott's scheme, which is the one I'm doing today, while the lower half contains the Airfix colour scheme. Everything is printed sharply and with very good colour registration. The layout sheets show the colours needed for the exterior painting. Most of these are standard like silver, black, gunmetal and white. What I don't have and what both designs use is this matte middle blue colour, Humbrol 89, so I'll need to get hold of a bottle of that. There's also a uh, Humbrol 166 light aircraft grey for interiors and for the undercarriage. If you've got it then great, if not you could just mix the black and white to make a kind of light grey instead. There are other colours to the interior too, but we'll come to those later. On Jeff Elliott's design the blue is just on the upper fuselage and tail and on a pattern on the underside. These will be absolutely okay to mask so no problems there. The instruction sheet is simple enough once you get past the multi-language warnings and advice. There is so little to this kit that the drawings are very very easy to follow. One thing that always amuses me is details like this here, the suggestion that the undercarriage doors are set at 5 degrees to the perpendicular. Do you know what? Just off straight will be good enough for most people, I think. Still, shows they care about accuracy sometimes. On to the build itself, and I've given everything a light coat of white primer before starting, and I'm going to begin by painting the cockpit in a medium sea grey, Humbrol 165 if you have it. I'm also painting the ejection seats. These have light grey sides, olive green seats and black top boxes. The inside of the cockpit wall is painted light aircraft grey, as are the undercarriage legs. 
The instrument panels are medium sea grey and when they're dry I'm going to add the instrument decals. It's not terribly clear from the instructions exactly where they go so I just kind of put them in the middle. It's a long, long time since I've seen the inside of a hawk. It was about 1978, I think. Anyway, there are also panels that go on either side of the cockpit as well. Helpfully, there are arrows to tell you which way is forward. And while I'm still in the painting mood, I'm going to do the control columns in light grey with black handles. With all the decals and paint dry, I can start assembling the cockpit. Now, I like to put the control columns in first as they can be difficult to get into their holes once the seats are in. Then I add the forward ejection seat, followed by the forward instrument panel. After this, the rear instrument panel goes in and the rear cockpit bulkhead. With that in place, the rear ejection seat can go in and the cockpit area is complete. Now while things like that are setting up, I fill in with other jobs I need doing, like painting the tyres. Once the cockpit has set properly, it can be fitted into the starboard side of the fuselage and it goes in really well. Then there's this small piece for the jet tailpipe to go in the back. Then the two halves of the fuselage can be joined together. I use clamps to hold these bits together to dry, but you can use clothes pegs, rubber bands or tape if you want. The next job is to assemble the wings. Now there's a one piece lower surface and two upper surfaces, all of which fit pretty well together. And once they're dry, the wing section can be glued to the bottom of the fuselage. Next on the list are the air intakes. These each come in two halves that are glued together. Back to the main fuselage and there's this piece that goes behind the cockpit. Then the cover for the instrument section between the pilots. Then those completed air intakes can go on either side of the fuselage. The fit isn't so great so I'm going to add some filler in the gap. With all of that done, I'm going to paint the top of the intermediate instrument section with anti-glare matte black paint, then the front instrument section as well. Now these are bits that will go inside the canopy when it's fitted, so they need to be done first. There's also this protective glass panel that fits between the two cockpits. Now as I'm spraying my kit, I need to mask the canopy. So I've been a bit lazy and bought a pre-cut set, Edouard CX248, if you want one to. The pieces are all pre-cut to shape and can be lifted off the backing with a sharp knife and then just laid in place. Do make sure you press them reasonably firmly on though to prevent leaks at the sides. Now, any gaps you can fill in with liquid mask if you have it, or you can use trimmings from the mask paper as I have. When all that's done, I give the model another coat of primer, then all over gloss white, and then mask the areas for the blue on the top and bottom. With the painting done, I can now start on the decals. And here is the first problem. This decal has to cross the wing fence that is already moulded in place. So what I had to do is cut the decal to fit it around either side. Then on each wing goes an RAF roundel. The tail decal is a little more tricky as it has to sit in the junction between the fin and the rear fuselage. I found it easiest to fit the decal to the fin first, then try to encourage the decal into the joints. After a while, it did go in place. You'll find using a decal softener such as Microset really useful for this. 
The biggest issue with the decals, and I can't believe Airfix actually test built this and thought it was good to go, is the side stripe. It's way, way too long in the middle. I eventually had to nick it with a very sharp craft knife in a few places and was able to remove a V-shaped chunk so the decal could go in behind the intake box. I got there in the end, but you can see how much I had to remove. This is really, really poor planning. The horizontal stabilizers, or tailplanes as they were once called, have these large decals so don't need to be painted. They can be set in place before they get put on the model. On the other wing, again I've had to cut the decal to fit the design. It would have been nice for Airfix to have figured this out and provided guidelines for cutting, but then, thinking about it, you just do what you can because it's not a real aircraft, so there's no actual right or wrong. Do what feels right to you. On the side of the fuselage are these hearts. Now the decal for this is a little fragile, so you might find just a few breaks here and there, but they will line up again with a little encouragement, a bit of patience and a wet paintbrush. Just take your time. A quick break from decals and I'm adding blue paint to the undercarriage doors in line with the swoop of blue under the fuselage. Then I'll fit the air brake and the fins on either side. Now the decals on the underside of the wings I've already done before I fit the flap track fairings. These go on later, which saves having to chop the decals up to get them to fit round. Then I can fit the wheels to the main undercarriage legs. And while those are setting, I'll put the horizontal stabilizers in place either side of the tail. With all of these fit and dry, I'm going to give the kit a coat of gloss varnish and leave everything alone for a while, go and have a cup of tea perhaps, and take a bit of a breather. Once the varnish is dry, I'm going to just um, top up the gaps between bits of decal so they look complete. Red and blue are standard colours, and they can be easily painted in. I can also line up the top of the blue with the start of the tail decal by trimming just a little bit of the white. Then I can take the masking tape off the cockpit and I'll remember to paint the jet exhaust in gunmetal grey. With the wheels dried on the legs I can fit the undercarriage to the bottom of the fuselage. There's this actuator leg that acts as a kind of brace on the kit. Next the nose wheels. Now the instructions did say I should do this right at the start but it would have got in the way of the painting so I'm adding it now. It does need a little bit of jiggling, but it will go through and fit really well. You can add the nose wheel doors as well at this point. Then those main gear doors. First the little outer doors that sit on the legs, then the bigger inner doors. Now do remember, these should be five degrees off the perpendicular, roughly. The last two pieces are this tiny nose light cover, and the pitot probe, which I'll paint silver. And that is the kit done. So there we have the NHS Together Hawk, a fun project, and if it raises a bit of cash for NHS charities, then that's great. Don't forget to consider donating your flying hour to Models for Heroes as well. Now, if you've enjoyed this, maybe found it helpful too, then please do subscribe to my channel for new builds, news and views, and other projects as they're completed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.